And he, he no way, that's your story. Anyway, he just became the most successful producer in the industry. And he was our great boss for all of these years and gave us the opportunity to do this show. Well, yeah. And the other thing about Aaron was that because he had been an actor, I think he had a feeling for actors. And very quickly our show became a, an oasis for other actors. They were paid well. Every so often they got to take one of these fabulous trips. And, and we, I didn't know him that well because I was pretty low on the, on the food chain and he, you know, he was dealing with larger stars and that, that's fine. But everybody, everybody was well treated on that show and the show had a reputation for treating actors well and that's something that was somewhat rare in the industry. The only impression that I had, the one thing that he could not tolerate, that he couldn't countenance, was betrayal. And, and too often, it's, it's um, a common suicide mission. Actors get on a hit show and somehow they, they cannot deal with this sudden success. And they'll get too big for themselves or they'll start saying things about the producer and, or they'll walk off the show. And of course, Aaron had had that with stuff like Charlie's Angels. Farrah Fawcett walked off the show after becoming a big star. And I think that that was something that he always had a hard time with. Now, in our case, that wasn't necessarily the, the case. But, but even though he was, as Bernie said, remote, and we saw him rarely, and he often didn't even see us, we were always, I think, well treated. And, and again, if you're in this business for a long time, that's the exception and not the rule. Yeah. He, one of my favorite stories about him, which I learned way, way later, um, my mom and I would always bring to Christmas for he and his family. She would make a huge Christmas stocking about my size, and we would fill it with things for the kids. We would fill it with, we liked making chocolate chip cookies, so we would, I mean, what do you give the man who has everything, the literal biggest house in the world, which is his private residence, so we would bake, and we would do cookies and cakes and fill this stocking up, and he was so appreciative every year and it wasn't until years later when I read his biography that I learned that he grew up impoverished like Bernie said living above a bakery and because his family couldn't afford food the bakery would bring up all their leftover sweets at the end of the day so he hated <laughs> never known that because every time it was a lovely thank you note and he would call so <laughs> remember Aaron's son was afraid to fly so he never took a cruise with us because he could never get to the ship he was he was about to get on a plane one day and his mother made him promise not to get on that plane and the plane crashed so he never flew, and that's why he had such a big house. He said, I don't vacation other places. My house is my vacation. Well, so. he did travel once, I remember, because we, we were, we, were um, we normally shot out of Los Angeles, San Pedro, if we were on location. But at one point, we were sailing out of Miami. I think it was Miami or Fort Lauderdale, I'm not sure. Anyway, Aaron doesn't fly, but he wanted to come because it was a fairly big production. So he did what anybody would do. He bought a train. <laughs> he bought a train and took it across the country. Not a big train, you know, but still a, a train and an engine, you know. It, and, and, you know, that was just, that's what he did. <laughs> because he could. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He did come on the ship. He, remember? he was on the ship a couple times. He just buy a train. Awesome. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. So that, that's about all the questions I have from the guest. I have a couple more questions for me, for you, though. What is what is one of the funniest moments that's happened on set while you were filming? Maybe while you were on a ship? Because cause you weren't always filming on a ship. You weren't always in set. 
Oh, on set. So what was one of the funnier things? We were often on the set. <laughs> we were often there. I remember us, all, well, before Jill was, um, when Jill was just a passenger as the captain's daughter, you were not yet a crew member, however that worked. What was your job? Yeah. <laughs> but I remember the four of us standing in many lines in Gavin's office, standing on a four-inch piece of tape that the four of us had to fit on, and those were some pretty funny times. We did crack up a couple times, didn't we, guys? Mm -hmm. My there, favorite is There when, was some giggling. When Henry Coleman had to come down and threaten Ted, because Ted wouldn't stop laughing. I got the giggles. You do not want to get the giggles. And, yeah, we got the giggles, and I laughed from 10 o'clock in the morning to 4 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> And we broke for lunch, and I thought I was good after I came back for lunch, and I was not good. He was supposed to be sleeping in a little cot. There was something, there was a flood on the ship, and everybody was in the captain's office. And so you would see Ted's cot with him in it, and you would just see that little tushy <laughs> laughing. That's the day you knew you were famous. Yeah, that was it. I knew they couldn't fire me at this point. So I just enjoyed the laugh. You know? It was a good laugh. No, loads, loads of good moments. Years and years of memories made. Uh, last question. One last question. Looking back on your time on the love boat, what are you the most grateful for? Yeah. Yeah. Um, clearly the ensemble, but there's one more thing that we have not talked about, and generally when we have these forums, the, the questions are who was your favorite guest star, what was your favorite uh, destination, and also, but, but there's one thing, and I think it's important since this crowd is, is so enthusiastic and has been so dedicated and loyal, um, and this is something that only could have happened on a prince's ship that was empowered by the love boat and this happened to me uh, when we took our trip to the Far East and the last place we were going to shoot was Japan. Now at that time my two older kids, not my daughter Monica was with me on this cruise, but my two older kids uh, were going to join with me in Japan and to get them over there because they were 10 and 8 we needed somebody to fly with them. Well it turned out that there was uh, a nanny that we knew who worked for another family and her name was Gloria Malloy and she was from Oklahoma but she was half Japanese and she'd never been to Japan and so we said well all right Gloria will you, you bring the kids over and we started to think about this and we thought well well Gloria's still got relatives in Japan who she's never met and they'd never met her so through the consulate, we were able to arrange a visit to her cousin or uncle or, or whatever it was. And so my two kids and, and I and, and Gloria went to see this Japanese family. Never met her. She spoke no Japanese. They spoke no English. When we arrived, it was as if she was coming back from the war. I mean, it was just, oh, Gloria. I mean, it was just wonderful. We sat there for two or three hours. Nobody understood each other, and it was constant communication. We all got it, okay? Except me, because the host kept pouring me big tumblers of Suntory whiskey, which I drank because I didn't want to be rude. Well, later in the ambulance, uh, that wasn't such a good idea. But, but, but now think about this. Gloria Malloy, United States citizen, half Japanese. Her family reunited. And I, 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 I don't know what happened to Gloria, but, but I, I assume she might have kept in touch with this. Would that have happened anywhere but on the love boat? That's an opportunity you'll, you'll never see in one of our clips. 
But to me, that's the most important and poignant mo moment I ever had on the show because I said, my God, we're actually doing something good here that transcends enjoying the show and putting on, you know, uh, an entertaining evening. And, and again, this is not something that could have happened anywhere else but because of the partnership between Princess and Love Boat and the rest of the world. I would just say about um, the, the, the glory of uh, John Forsyth, who, uh, who guested on the, on the uh, China show and the China, China Wall. Uh, I'm a tennis player and uh, I was in Monaco and John Forsyth was in Monaco and there was a man who had a monumentally gorgeous multi-zillion dollar uh, yacht and he invited Forsyth and Wayne Rogers and myself for lunch one day. I said, oh, this is really wonderful. So lunch is over. And the man is very happy after eating his wonderful meal, and, and so are we. And he's sitting on the indoor, indoor deck, and he said, now, after that meal, I feel like sex. <laughs> and Forsyth had a diabolical sense of humor. And after the man said that, I was here, Forsyth was there, the man was there, and he said, burn. <laughs> John Forsyth, diabolical. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, we, we, we thank you all for, for putting together such an incredible show that's changed lives, it's changed cruising, uh, it's changed the way that we look at television shows. Uh, your, your format, the format of the shows was so different from anything else, and that's one of the reasons why it lives on to this day. And it'll keep living on. And so we thank each and every single one of you uh, and they thank you as well. How do you feel about these, how do you feel about these fans, these people? So no grateful, so no grateful. So, so with that, they, they want to thank you all also by doing a bit of a meet and greet with you. So, at around 12 o'clock, a bit after 12 o'clock in the Crooner's Bar, uh, they will be there to take a few pictures with you uh, quickly because there's a lot of y'all <laughs> And that'll be uh, in the crooner's bar. So we're not done yet. We're not done yet. So don't get up yet uh, You're gonna go out this way and go through the casino and there'll be crew members there that'll lead you The way that we need for a line because I don't want y'all just rushing and yeah I, so, I just wanted to say thank you genuinely from the bottom of our hearts for being so loving and enthusiastic. It is, it is, I mean, who would have thought this many years later? And we all had the same experience. We all did. We all were together cruising and we all fell in love with cruising together and we all fell in love with falling in love. So we share something together and we are so grateful that we get to experience it here with you today. So thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for the cast of the Love Boat. Cynthia Lawrence Reed, Ted Lamb, Greg Grandy, Bernie Capel, and Gino Wheeler. Like you said, uh, they'll be at the Killers Bar a little bit after 12 o'clock uh, for a meet and greet. Uh, follow the directions of the cast members and of the team members. They'll show you the direct way to line up. Thank you all so much for coming. Appreciate you.